Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, and freaks of nature of all ages. My name is Reverend Brian Bad Hippie Jackson, and welcome to my channel. Hello, and welcome to my first Scrapsman video. Now, in case you're wondering what a Scrapsman is, that is someone who crafts from scrap. And that's what I do. I take scrap, things that other people don't want, things that other people believe are useless, and I craft cool stuff out of these scraps. It's, it's my concept of reads, rethink, reevaluate, reuse, recycle, rejuvenate, repurpose. Not everything has one use. And even when things are, are designed and intended to only have one use, I can generally find another use for them. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be scrafting arrows out of old fiberglass tent poles. And I have everything I need to do the job today. And I've also got one of the arrows well started so I can show you what we're starting with and what we're looking at kind of sort of finishing with. What I started with was the length of this stuff. Now this stuff is old fiberglass tent pole and it still has the metal connector points where it's supposed to fold apart but it's so old and corroded that everything is stuck together so i took one of these segments basically from all the way to kept one metal end on it and i made this that arrow was made from one of those fiberglass tent poles. Now, yes, I still need to finish the knock, but where'd I go? There it is. I still need to finish the knock, but the knock has been started and it needs to be fletched. But I did make this out of one of those tent poles, but this is all hand forged uh, and it's also cold forged. I didn't apply any heat to it yet. And that's why that arrow has not finished because it still hasn't been through any process of getting heat. Arrow material. And I'm just on this one, I'm going to cut the center section out over here from here to here because this piece of fiberglass has been pinched and bent. This one's still straight. Once fiberglass is pinched and bent, it's, you, you can't get it unpinched and unbent. So we're just going to get rid of this piece. Pretty simple process. This saw bites good and there's not a lot of material to go through. You basically just run it around in a little bit of a circle and there you go. I know where that knock's going. And now I've got the material to make two more arrows. Anyways, now that I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and saw down the rest of those pieces. And when I come back, I'll show you how I, how I shape that head. Before I can take the tip and flatten it down, it's got all that fiberglass material inside of it, okay? You can see right there. We got that fiberglass material inside of that head. Now. We're not gonna be able to flatten that down and forge weld it later with that material in there. So that material's gotta come out. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take these drill bits that are designed to be used with multiple kinds of drills. They can also be used with ratchet attachments because of this. And the cool thing is they can be used with this here screwdriver. You just blank like that. And now I've got a screwdriver drill bit. Once that material is cleared out of the ends, then we're going to go to this tool, this bad boy right here. What this is, is a railroad sledge. What we're going to use it for today is this. This is going to be my anvil. All right, so the first step in the process is to go ahead and get some of this material cleaned out of this tip. So let's start with the smallest of the drill bits. And 
And that's why I have the towel on the table because I know I'm going to be making a mess. Now what I want to do is I want to go, there's a little, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little divot right there. That's where the two different fiberglass pieces connect inside this connector. Um, so if I take it down to there, I'm going to get the same size arrowhead I've got on this other one. And so we're only going to want to go down about yay deep, two twists from the top maybe. Yeah, about two twists from the top. So we're just going to set that in there. start hogging out material. As deep as we need to. If it's a little bit deeper than we originally intended, that's okay, as long as it's not way too deep. Now that we've got the first hole done, we're going to go to the next size up. Now you really don't have to do this size to size, and you can use a power drill bit and just drill that thing real quick. I do this because it tends to, to me, I just have a little bit better control. It takes a little bit longer, but I don't have to worry about my power tools slipping. I don't really have to worry about accidentally going too deep and screwing up where everything's set. I can take it slow and easy and make sure that it's done proper. Proper is important. We're almost deep enough need to go to right about there. There we go. That should have it. You can see the difference already in how much material we've already hogged out of that hole. biggest bit and that's still not going to hog everything off the side so I might put a pause on this and see if I've got a bigger bit back there that I can use set those out of the way so they stop digging into my hand Now, as you can see, we've almost got all that material out. So let me go ahead and see if I've got a bigger drill bit back there that I can finish doing this with. Okay, so if I've got a bigger bit, it's going to be in this box. Ooh, that might work. Now, I'm not going to be able to attach that to the screwdriver because the tip's completely round, but it is an auger bit, and if it's thin enough, That's going to give us the ability to loosen up that shit at the tip. So that's a possibility there. The main thing we're wanting to do is get all the material off this very tip because that's where we're going to have to forge weld eventually is on the tip. Now, are there faster ways to accomplish this? Absolutely. Am I going to do them? Probably not. I still got a little bit up on this edge that we need to get rid of. So I'm going to go in with the knife and try to do that. A 
loosen it up and cut it out. Fiberglass is some tough shit. And now what we have is a fairly clean interior that will allow us to squish it down and forge weld these tips. Now, we're going to use this divot as a guideline. That's where we want our edge to be. And then we can use that guideline of where our edge is to put our knock in. So. We're going to just set it on there with the divot straight down or the divot side to side and we're going to start hitting it with a hammer. Now it's starting to break loose some of that material. Now we can start hammering again. And I picked up a split right there. See it? That is going to cause problems. So the first thing I want to do with that split is bring it over. And make sure it's on the top. Got a pretty nice taper going. Split is going to be an issue. Now, the technique I'm using right now to hammer with is what is known as planishing. And what planishing is, is short, light strokes at a type of an angle. And it's generally used by armorers to remove roughness and surface imperfections. I use it right now to try to manage the split before it becomes something that can't be managed. And now we've got it flattened out. Next step in the parade, I forgot one thing. I gotta go get a chisel. All right, draw my center line on there. And then, I'm going to try as much as possible to draw two more lines that are pretty much even. Maybe the big one will work better. Get more surface coverage. There we go. Now for the other side. There we go. Finally busted it off. And there we go. We now have a mostly shaped tip. Pick up my other hammer. Start putting some better definition on this edge than the net. Split over. Now 
See how that tip's coming apart? How that's splitting? That's what happens if you don't forge weld. Now I'm trying to fix that tip or that, that split that I picked up. I separated that tip out. There we go. I would not recommend using this for hunting on a regular basis, but what it is good for is emergency in a pinch survival. All right, and now that that's done, it's time to move to the files. So we're gonna start with our rougher one. And all we're doing here is we're not sharpening it. Sharpening will not happen until after we forge welded those tips and gotten one good solid piece. All we're doing It's cleaning off the rough edges and trying to level this out to be a bit more even with each other so that we have a fairly even arrowhead. There we go. And there we have it, one rough forged arrowhead. Still got that split in it that we're gonna have to contend with, but as it sits right now, I could use this thing right now for small game. I could hunt with it. The way it is right now, I could hunt with it and use it to take down small game. This will definitely take down rabbits and small game of that nature. So even without forge welding. So now we've got two arrows. This one, oddly enough, the first one I did came out better. I didn't get as severe of a split. But we now have something that resembles a matching set. But that's it. That's how you cold forge an old fiberglass tent pole and use the included connectors to make your arrowheads. This is survival in a pinch. This will allow you to hunt small game. If you don't have a bow, that's okay too because you can always hold it in your hand and use it as a fishing spear. <laughs> there you go.